What's the difference between quack grass and crab grass? Now, both of these are the weeds you want to get out of the garden. They can be real problems. But I see so many comments online that confuse the two. Now, most of the time, I don't think it's important that you're able to identify weeds. But in this case, it is. The weeds grow quite differently, although they look somewhat similar. But the solution to getting rid of them is very different. If you think you have crabgrass and you treat for crabgrass, but you actually have quackgrass, it'll do absolutely no good for you and vice versa. You have to know which of these weeds you have if you're going to try to get rid of it. So in this video, I'm going to explain the differences between the two and then I'll give you solutions for getting rid of both of them. Well, let's start with a simple way to identify these two. If it's springtime and you have one of these grasses growing, it is not crabgrass. Crabgrass is an annual and it doesn't germinate until the temperatures get at least to 55 Fahrenheit and even 60 Fahrenheit. That's when the seeds germinate and the plant starts to grow. So in spring, there is no crabgrass. Quackgrass, on the other hand, is a perennial. So it's underground during the winter, and as soon as spring arrives, it starts to grow. In fact, it's a cool growing grass. It grows a lot like the grass in your lawn. So even in cool spring weather, it's starting to grow. Now let's have a look at the actual plant. Even they grow quite differently. It's the middle of summer, and this quackgrass has grown quite tall. In fact, it's starting to flower around here. But you can see how it grows. It's very upright, and it does this all season long. So even in spring when it starts to grow, the leaves go straight up. This is a different type of grass. But early in the spring, this is what crabgrass looks like. It's a short grass. It hasn't had enough time to make these long stems yet. So if you're looking for this plant in early spring, it looks a little bit more like this one. I know it's not quackgrass, because it's not making these long white roots out the side. It is spreading, but it makes new growth right next to the mother plant. So this is a different kind of plant. So this is a perennial. It's obviously a grass, but it's not one of the two I'm talking about in this video. I'm just using this plant to show you what crackgrass looks like in the middle of spring. This is crabgrass, and it grows quite differently. It grows very horizontal, it never gets very high. It makes this nice rosette that you can see sitting right against the ground. In fact, that's one of the problems with this weed. You tend not to notice it too much until it gets larger and then you have lots of it. Then you notice it. The other thing that's quite different is the root system. And it's really important that you understand these two root systems. Crabgrass makes a nice fibrous root system. Now I've washed this so that you can see the roots a little better, but you get this nice clump of roots going down below the plant. You don't get any roots growing out the side. Back to the quack grass. It has a root system that goes down too, but it also goes out to the side. And the most identifying feature of this are these runners. These white things look like roots, but they're actually runners from the plant. This is how it spreads. It grows these runners out to the side and then they make a new plant. And then that one makes runners and it makes a new plant. If you're not sure whether it's crab or quack, dig up the plant and have a look at the roots. You'll see right away. If there's white runners going out to the side, you know you have quack grass. Now it's mid July here and this is what they'll look like right now. I've described what these look like in spring. The quack grass starts growing right away. The crab grass won't start growing until late spring, early summer. And unless you look very closely to find the seedlings, you really don't see it until midsummer. Now, what about fall? How do these compare in the fall? Well, this one turns brown because remember it's an annual. So in the fall, it dies. This one, on the other hand, is nice and tall and stays green right up till frost. Crabgrass, brown in the fall and dying, so there's no point in doing anything about it. 
This one is nice and tall and green. Still a good time to dig this one out at that point. All right, so how do you get rid of these two? They both spread a lot. They're both a real pain to the gardener. What do you do about them? Well, the solution comes back to understanding how they grow. So let's look at crabgrass first. When the plant is this size, it hasn't started flowering yet. The flowers will come in another two to three weeks. They also tend to lay on the ground and they'll be horizontal. This plant makes a million seeds. Remember, it's annual. So the only way it can propagate itself is with seed and it makes a lot of it. And that's the real problem with this one. Any open soil you have in your garden will get covered with this thing. Because it's a low plant, it really doesn't compete with most garden perennials. So anything that's two feet tall will just shade this out. This is a problem in pathways where there's cracks between stone or along the edge of beds where sun can get to it. The way we control this one is to stop seeds from forming or to prevent the seeds from germinating. The way you prevent seeds from germinating is to use mulch and plants and just keep that soil covered. And this really isn't much of a problem in your ornamental beds, that is. It can be a real problem in lawns. Because it's low like this, when you mow your lawn, you don't really harm this plant. In fact, if it does start getting a little taller and you cut it off, it just grows even lower down. So it can be a real problem in a lawn. The way you get rid of it in a lawn is to grow really good grass. That keeps the seeds from germinating. You also mow a little taller. That reduces the light getting to the seeds. Also reduces the number of plants. The other thing you can do is put on a pre-emergent herbicide. Now these can be chemical or they can be organic. Corn gluten meal is one organic option. Now it does work, but it's a little tricky to apply. You have to use lots of it, and it's quite expensive. But if you use that, follow the directions exactly. You have to apply it, and you have to water it in, and do it the way the instructions tell you. Otherwise, it's a waste of time. In fact, corn gluten meal actually has a lot of nitrogen in it, so if you do it wrong, it actually makes these things grow better. Now, there are also post-emergent herbicides, and you can try some of those. All right, quack grass. How do you deal with this thing? Well, as I mentioned, you can try digging it out, but good luck with that. If this is a young plant and it's just germinated and you dig it out, that works. But once these guys are established, it's next to impossible. I have a few spots in my garden where they come up every year. I dig them up every year and I can't get all the runners. So they come back. I control the weed. It doesn't spread a lot because I keep digging it, but it's really hard to get out. Quite honestly, the best treatment for these in an ornamental bed is to get yourself some Roundup. Don't spray it on because you're gonna damage other plants, but just paint it on the leaves. What I do is I get a rubber glove, dab it in the Roundup so the fingers are a little moist, and then I just run it up like this. One pass and the plant will be dead. And the nice thing about Roundup is that it's taken into the roots and it tends to kill these roots as well. Now, I know some of you are saying, hey, Roundup, that's a horrible herbicide. If that's what you think, you're believing a lot of the myths that are around about Roundup. Roundup is actually less toxic than vinegar. That's a known fact that everyone accepts. I don't spray Roundup all over the place, but for weeds like this, it is the best control. What about quack grass that's growing in your lawn? Well, it's really hard to put a herbicide on there because you'll also kill your lawn, so that doesn't really work. And if you mow this, it stays nice and short. The way you identify this in a lawn is by looking at your grass. A good quality lawn grass like Kentucky has nice thin blades, it's fairly soft. When you keep mowing this, you get these tough little stubbles and the leaves are quite a bit larger and they're coarser and you can see that in a lawn there's no point in trying to use a pre-emergent on this because it's already growing it's a perennial pre-emergents are designed for seeds and preventing seeds from germinating so those don't work on this weed your only option really is to dig this thing out and you can identify it in the lawn but to be honest with you 
If you're that fussy about your lawn, you're probably going to have all kinds of other weeds to worry about as well. This weed tends not to be as big a problem in a lawn because you cut it all the time. So it never makes a lot of leaves. It doesn't photosynthesize a lot, so it doesn't make a lot of food. So it doesn't have a lot of food to make all these runners. So it tends not to spread so much. But in an ornamental bed or vegetable bed, boy, these things are a pain in the ass. All right, now you know the difference between the two plants. One's a perennial, one's an annual. They look quite different. The treatments to get rid of them are quite different. Now you'll be able to take care of them in your garden. And this is a lesson that all gardeners should learn. Start to identify the important plants in your garden. I see far too many comments online that say, I have a weed, what should I do about it? Well, if you don't know anything about the weeds, it's really hard to figure out what to do. I am working on another video that's all about weeds, where we're going to talk about lots of different types and what to do about them. I'm not going to try to get you to memorize 100 different weed names. You don't need to do that. There's a very simple way to figure out what type of weed you have and then come up with an appropriate treatment. See you in a future video.